If you love tiny homes, but are not such a fan of the idea of crawling into a sleeping loft, then you are going to love this next design. Because here, we've found a tiny house, we're in the loft, even I can stand up. G'day Angus, how's it going mate? Yeah, good yourself. Very well, thank you. It's great to meet you. And dude, what an incredible setup you have here. Yeah, no, it took a bit to get here. We started nine months ago. We brought this home and put it up here. But yeah, finally coming together. A couple more little uh, items to do and we're there. <laughs> Fantastic. So first of all, what was it that inspired you to build a tiny house? So sort of, it goes back to my business plans and that of moving around. So. The tiny house sort of works out quite well because we can pack up and move on and then it also gave us the options down the road if we wanted to build our own house we've got the tiny house on the property we can live in that build our own property and then move in and either rent the tiny house out or on sell it but yeah now that we've been living in it nine months sort of thing we not really in a rush to go any bigger it's everything we need and more so yeah it's a bit of a lifestyle <laughs> So you live in a tiny house, but you have since actually started your business, which is moving tiny houses. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so before I brought this home, I carted caravans and cars and stuff sort of all around the country, really. And then I brought this house from the South Island and had organized another company to cart it, but something went wrong. So we ended up thinking, oh, how hard can it be? So carted this house back up here for myself and by doing that, it sort of opened our eyes to the market of the tiny houses. And so, yeah, we thought we would um, tackle that market and have since built custom vehicles and trailers to help out. And yeah, now we're moving anywhere between 30 and 50 houses a month all around New Zealand. So I've just come straight back from um, down Nelson Way just a few days ago to come and film this. <laughs> Fantastic. I remember when I built my tiny house, how difficult it was to get it shifted around. And it's so cool to me that there are now companies in New Zealand that are dedicated just to moving tiny houses. And what an incredible parking space you've got for your house as well. These are just expansive views, aren't they? Yeah, you get to see what's going on in the area, that's for sure. I think we're uh, about 250 metres above sea level up here. As you see, it rises quite quickly from down at our letterbox straight up. But yeah, we get good sun and good views and what more do we need? <laughs> Absolutely. And so what size is the tiny house? So this is 10 metres long, 3.1 wide, and from the ground to the roof is four meters 40. So that lets us, when we're standing inside, you can stand on the bottom level and the top level without hitting your head. Well, I'm short, so maybe you might have some different issues. <laughs> <laughs> and you have done some incredible work around this house. I see you've got lots of storage for your business out the back. I see you've got the shipping containers, mud room, and then this incredible deck space as well. Yeah, so when we built this deck, it's made eight by three. So going three means we can transport it without any pilot and everything's removable. So we can just unbolt it and um, we're gone. So yeah, that was a big thing for us to be able to move it cheaply and simply. And yeah, the mud room was just, so you've got somewhere to put your dirty shoes and hang your coats and just a little bit more space. Yeah, and then the main reason for the container was actually to hold all of our solar batteries. So we've got a five kilowatt solar kit and that does more than we need. We've never used more than maybe 15% of our battery capacity and I'm charging all my truck batteries and impact guns and everything. So yeah, it works out really well. And I see you've got the side by side out there. That looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, well, I live on one of the most well-known four-wheel drive tracks in the country, so it sort of would be silly not to be able to have a bit of fun up there. It's seven kilometres up to the summit and 14 kilometres down to Caddy Caddy, and you could spend a few weeks up there if you really wanted to. Awesome fun. Well, I love what you've done with this place. You have got some seriously fun stuff happening out here, and I cannot wait to see what you've done in the house. Can we check it out? Yeah, come on in. All right, thanks. Oh wow, this is such a spacious tiny house. And stepping inside, you can really sense the extra height in here. Yeah, so having a full size ceiling in the dining room area here, it gives you a big spacious feel. And then you've still got plenty of room for a bedroom, lounge, and a full size kitchen. So it's everything we need. <laughs> Absolutely. 
And I really like the way that having the dedicated lounge in the upstairs loft gives you the ability to have a dining area. Yeah, definitely. So this table actually goes from a four person to a two person if we need a little bit more room. But as you can see, there's ample room. We can walk around it. We can sit here, have dinner, look out at the view and plenty of room. And then I really like the design of this kitchen. It is, again, incredibly spacious, isn't it? Yeah, so we've gone for the bamboo top um, finish and then we've got our bench seats here so we can sit out having a look at the view while we're eating our breakfast or dinner or whatnot. And um, we've gone, because we're off grid, we've got the gas hob and the gas oven and plenty of cupboard space as well as being able to have our microwave and all the little utensils within arm's reach. Yeah, absolutely everything you need. Lots of bench space too. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, we quite often are sitting up here cooking dinner or doing office work or whatnot and you're never short of space, so it's definitely a nice touch. Now you've got the lounge upstairs and I cannot wait to see if I can actually stand up in this loft because I think this house might be just high enough. But first, let's talk about these stairs because this is such a unique design. Yeah, they take a little bit to get used to, like your first time walking up them feels a bit awkward, but once you're used to them, they're really good. You can go up frontwards and down frontwards on such a steep angle without any issues. So if they were your normal step design, then you'd probably end up coming down backwards because it's so steep. Yeah, and it's so much more comfortable than using a ladder, but so much more spatially efficient than having conventional stairs. Yes, yeah, and in my opinion, it's a bit safer as well, a lot more sturdy to go up and down, so you're not hanging from a ladder and you feel comfortable. Definitely. Well, let's head up and take a look. Yep, come on. Cool. What a cosy space this is up here. It definitely looks like this is a place which is just completely dedicated to lounging. Yeah, we spend a lot of time up here just laying on the couch watching um, movies and just, yeah, relaxing. And it really is so nice having a dedicated lounge space that's also separate from the rest of the house because it does feel just a little bit more cosy and a little bit more private up here. Yeah, yeah, it definitely gives you space when you're, you're downstairs working or whatnot. You can just come up here and you're in a different atmosphere. It's um, definitely a nice area up here. Yeah, and amazingly... I'm standing up right now. Yeah, no, it's definitely nice. Obviously, height's not overly an issue for me, but we have quite a few people that come around and they all say the same thing, that they like that you can stand up here and then you can slump onto the couch and you don't have any issues with having to duck or anything like that. It's definitely well thought out how the space from where the fridge, etc., cetera, is um, gives you this extra height upstairs. Absolutely. Cool, well, should we check out the bathroom next? Yeah, definitely. All right. These stairs are actually really comfortable to use, aren't they? Yeah, no, you definitely get used to them after you've used them a few times, that's for sure. Absolutely. So bathroom's in here then? Yep, straight ahead. All right, let's take a look. So just like everything else in this house, spacious bathroom. Yeah, um, you've definitely got a lot of room in here. We've got a full-size shower, toilet, vanity. Yeah, and we've got full cupboards in here. Plenty of space for storage. Loads of storage. And flushing toilet as well, that's a bit of luxury. Yes, yep, no expense spared. <laughs> so you put in a septic system here to handle all that? Yeah, so we've got just a big tank that we get emptied um, when we need to. So we haven't had to empty it in nine months yet, but it must be close to being due. Right, nice and easy. And again, you have got a lot of storage in this space, which is great to see. Yeah, so we've got our shelves for all of our clothes, hooks to hang Kate's clothes on, and then we've got room down the bottom if we need to put a vacuum cleaner or anything like that. So yeah, it's about all the space we need really. The full length window here is another really nice feature. Yeah, so you've got the option of glazing it out if we want to, but we're sort of in the middle of nowhere, so it's nice to be able to let all that light come in during the day. Um, yeah, and it just I think it opens the space up a lot more and makes it nice and light. Everyone likes to be able to sit on the toilet with a view. Yeah, exactly, and I think you've got a pretty nice one there. You sure do. And I see out the window you've got a few horses hanging about. Yeah, so there's four and a quarter hanging on this property. One's a miniature horse and they have about 30 acres of free range and then we just catch them when we want to go horse riding. Lucky horses. Yeah, as you can see, they get a bit uh, friendly and try to break into our gardens and whatnot, but um, <laughs> they're good to have around. Absolutely. Oh, that's lovely. And then your sleeping loft is upstairs. Yeah, come on out and I'll show you. Let's take a look. This is very nice. And again, it is just such a novelty for me to be able to stand up here. 
Yeah, no, it's um quite a nice spacious area. We've actually tried this bed around every way, working out what way we like it. So we've decided to run it across ways, which sort of isn't overly conventional, but it's good because we can both get on either side of the bed and everything. When you have it that way, you end up you know crawling over. So yeah, there's heaps of room up here. We've got more storage. We've got lights. We've got everything we need. You've got lots of windows up here as well, which is really good. There's a lovely cross breeze up here. Yeah, so we've got plenty of light coming in. It's good, we can leave the windows open and get the air blowing, especially on those hot summer nights and that. You can leave all the windows open and have a bit of a breeze to sleep with. Yeah, it's definitely well thought out up here. So you've been living in the tiny house for about nine months now. How's it all working out for you? Yeah, no, we both um, really love it. We've got everything we need and yeah, there's not really anything else we could ask for. Moving into the tiny house with my partner was good. We both are on the same wavelength when it comes to the tiny house, so we both love it. And we had a big house before this, so we had a lot of stuff. And at the time, you think you need all that, but when you actually move into the tiny house and you start being a bit more particular on what you need, because obviously you don't have as much space, you learn pretty quickly that you don't need so much um, clutter and you can sort of declutter your life moving into a tiny house. And... One of the big things I love about this house is just the quality and you know you're coming home to something so comfortable and cosy and warm and it's sort of a lot cheaper than building a house or buying a house in this climate. <laughs> and can we talk about the cost that was involved in building this house? When I originally purchased this house was 175000 Um so that was mid last year, so prices for everyone have gone up since then, I'd imagine. Of course. Um, and then plus my own cost of bringing it up to deliver it and that sort of stuff. And for 175000 you have built yourself quite a paradise here, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, we've spent a little bit more and we've done the decks and the mud room and the gazebo area and over the last nine months we've put more into it to get it to a home, but yeah, wouldn't change anything. So now that you've almost finished setting everything up here, what does the future hold for you now? This is sort of my base, but I'm not home as much as I'd like to be. I'm all around New Zealand delivering the houses, so eventually I'd like to get a bit more North Island work so I can spend more time at home. But yeah, for now it's nice to have somewhere where you can come home to as a base. And nice to have some adventures on the road as well, right? Yeah, definitely. And it's good when I come home, I I'm, I'm, can go do my hobbies literally 50 metres away from my house. So it's not a lot of travelling involved because the last thing I want to do when I get home is go driving. <laughs> Absolutely, what a playground you've got here. Well Angus, what you've created here is really special. You've got such a beautiful house here and some really cool projects on the go around it. So thank you so much for sharing it all with no, me. Thank you. My pleasure. There is a lot of really good design that's gone into this tiny house. It's amazing for me to see what an incredible difference just that little bit of extra height has made to this entire space. There's no question about it, here in this home, Angus has created a little bit of paradise for himself.